sick. 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 You get sick. <laughs> so you can see she's actually, there we go, that she actually wasn't working. Good, seek. Good girl that she was just box stomping. So we turned around and went back the way we came from and she hit. Good girl. All right, let's go. Good girl. And you ready? Seek. Alert. Yes. 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 Good boy. So on that one, my plan had been that we were going to head down this way, but you give them their head and you see that he, as soon as he got in this room, he already had an idea on where he wanted to go. He barely sniffed those first two and then bam, hit right in the third one. So trust your dog, huge lesson. Welcome to the Singing Boston. I'm Kelly. And this is Dice. We're going to continue on in our nose work series or scent work series with handler discrimination, which I personally think is the coolest. It seems to freak a lot of people out. I'm not quite sure why, so there might be something I'm missing to it. But to me, it's just another odor. In handler discrimination, it will always be first class of the day because they don't want any odor to contaminate the handler discrimination. And what's going to happen in novice, you can have a sock or a cotton ball. When you get to the higher levels, it has to be a cotton ball. So we're training with the cotton ball now, so we're ready for the higher levels. There will be a volunteer who will bring a fresh box and you'll be hidden behind a curtain or outside of the room and they'll take the box like this and they'll probably have gloves on and you'll drop your sock or your cotton ball in there and they're gonna seal it up and they're gonna go put it down for your dog to find. The judge has also put their odor on the cotton ball and it will be in the boxes that you find. So there will be two odors there and the rest will be empty. And the dog has to alert on the one with your odor, obviously. For this one, we use a different command. So our find command for finding the odor is find it. For this, we use seek. So it lets the dog know that we're going to be looking for handler odor instead of birch or anise or cypress or clove. You train this just like any other odor. So you will have a separate box for this because again, you don't want to cross contaminate. You don't want the birch or anise in here. So have a separate box. Um, I have K's on mine. We have N on Nick's. We don't cross contaminate between the two of us because we will use each other's odor as the odor not to alert on, which of course is a little bit tougher for the dog because they know both of us. But Timo always works with Nick and Ellie and Dice always work, always work with me. So they know don't, um, don't hit on dad's odor, hit on mom's odor. Huh, are you ready? I do keep them stored in the same area <laughs> as my, um, my odor boxes, but away from them so we don't get too much cross contamination. Okay, where are you gonna find Okay, come over here. I know. Give me a sec. Where you're going to find a lot of people keep their odor is nice and close to your skin. So a lot of women will keep it in their bras. A lot of guys will tuck it in their waistband. So wherever it's touching skin. And really their noses are so fantastic. I could probably just do this and drop it in and it would be fine. But I feel a little more confident and a little more secure if it has lots of odor. I've even taken socks where I had run the day before and sealed them up in a plastic bag and used that one. And I'm sure poor Dice and Ellie were like, oh my God, stop that lady. So, but we use the cotton ball and I'm gonna start with one box. We've got some really good treats. We're vegetarians, and so when we go to Panera Bread and get salads, they all come with meat. And so we order the meat on the side. Just a minute, don't be cheeky and rude. And they absolutely love this stuff. So even if you are a carnivore, it might be worth just getting a side of meat for them because this stuff is nice and stinky and they love it and it's small, you can break it up real easy. So I'm going to simply drop my cotton ball in my box. 
And just like the odor, if you watched our intro to odor and containers, sick. Yes. Good boy. Sick. Yes. And so his alert is actually that he lays down and looks at me. Okay. And I'm going to reset by tossing a cookie. Good boy. Sick. Yes. So I want him looking more at the box than at me. Right now he's staring straight at me. Okay, free. I'm resetting. Seek. Yes. Good boy. Yes. And when you first start this, of course, the dog's going to have no idea what you're doing. So any interaction. Yes. Good. Seek. Any interaction whatsoever towards this, reward it. You may even have to just start with a cotton ball. And notice these are all clean boxes or cold boxes. So I'm keeping my hot box. I'm not setting them on there. So you may even want to just start with a cotton ball. Seek. <laughs> yes, make sure they don't eat your, so your uh, cotton ball. So you may have to put it in a container. You could even put it in a little container, like a butter container or something, and punch a bunch of holes in it so they can't eat it, but they can see it. So that way they uh, get the idea. If you use a sock, hopefully then they really won't eat it. But Seek. Yes. Good boy. Seek. Yes. And once they're reliably getting that. Seek. Yes. Good boy. So if you want to start with just the cotton ball, um, no problem with that. If you want to see if your dog gets it with the box first, and then you can always back up. That's fine too. What you don't want to do is go too long with the box and the dog is like, I totally don't get what you're talking about here. If they pretty much almost immediately don't go over the box, just put the box to the side. And again, keep that box separated from everything else and just go straight to your cotton ball, whether it's in a container with holes in it or loose. See? Yes. And you can use any term you want, of course. It doesn't have to be seek or find. This is just what we use in some of the common ones. Seek. Yes, good boy. So have some fun with it as your dog gets more proficient. Have your partner or friend, um, if you live alone, give them some cotton balls and ask them to wear the cotton balls on their body. Might be good if, if uh, it's a dog friend that you ask that to. If not, you may get to know your neighbors a little more closely than you ever realized you would. And ask them to just keep some cotton balls, one or two, in their waistband, and then put it in a sealed baggie. And that way you have it. You can store it in the fridge. That might help keep the odor in there a little bit too. So, but at first, just practice with just your odor, and then do just like the intro to containers, where I'm starting with just the very basics. Then I'm gonna start with two boxes, and I'll introduce more boxes from there. Handler discrimination will always be in a box, so you don't need to practice in other containers, although it certainly never hurts to have a flexible dog and practice in other containers. So please give our video a thumbs up or a like if you found it useful, and be sure to subscribe to us so you don't miss future upcoming videos. Good boy.